What's up guys? Welcome back to um Love at First Sight. Saturday morning I ring in Salty's doorbell. Before it along I hear a soft footsteps before the door swings open. Oh my Good morning, Mama Senpai. Good morning, such are those close to you? Yes, um what do you think? You look good, they look really cute on you. That's not me just being nice, I really do make her look cute. I never seen her dress this way until now, it's her first look to say the least. Along with her new clothes, she's wearing her bright smile that I'm sure the crying girl in the stairs never would have worn. The whole end symbol seems to be her sparkle. Thank you. She looked a little embarrassed when she first appeared in the doorway, but after she heard what I thought of her, her face lit right up. Good morning, my model con. I'm so mesmerized by Sachi that I don't notice Mamie step out the house behind her and her voice snaps me out of the daze with a jolt. Good morning. Take care, Sachi. Sachi don't cause any trouble for my model con. All right. Mamie's gaze is icy as I have her tone no friendlier than usual, and Sachi responds in the same panicked tone she's always been when talking to her aunt. Good. I have a time. I have a good time, you too. Thank you. How have things been with your aunt lately? Lately, well, she was acting differently in the house. I guess I shouldn't have expected her to change her long time habits overnight. But she did buy me these clothes. I thought she might want to get me these any or anything. Wait, what? I thought she might want me to just get anything so we could go home, but she actually helped me pick these out. That's great. I mean, she just tried to express herself through her actions more than through her attitude. I was a little worried, but I should have had more faith in her, it seems. I knew you must have said so too yesterday. You did, right? No, we were just standing around talking. That's a lie, of course, but Mamie more or less begged me not to tell Sachi. They need to solve their differences in their own way, and all I can do is watch. Oh, you are, but Amy didn't even tell me why she suddenly wanted to buy me clothes. Did you ask her? Yeah, kind of. Ask her directly when you get a chance, and not just for this. You should be straightforward with her whenever you need something. If you ask her directly, I'm sure she'll answer you directly. Probably. I guess so. I'm sure she doesn't hate you if she did. I doubt she had bought you those clothes. Yeah, you're right. I'll have to thank her again for that. By the way, are you sure you're fine without a hood? Yeah. As long as I'm with you, I don't care who sees me. You really think these clothes suit me? Yeah, totally. You're really cute. I think the only would have embarrassed a sister like that out loud. But that's how I really feel. And if it makes such a smile, I'll say it over and over again. As long as you think so, I don't care what anyone else thinks. Pretty soon after we arrived at the place we were supposed to meet up with Akim and Tomo, though it seems they beat us there. Hey, you guys, they're late. So sorry. Actually, we're about 10 minutes early. But we've been waiting here for so long. Akimi being here early isn't a bad thing, but don't get mad at them for being on time. Seriously. Who said are you on? We're here to meet them, so maybe they should get here a little early. Yeah, right. Early? You mean like an hour early? That's how early we were? Unfortunately, yes. But I wanted to meet Sacha so bad, I've been seeing her in my dreams. You can't blame me for that. You know, I bet they could be sisters if it was just a one-eyed thing. Anyway, um, and like I said, if you pressure the people around you into doing things, you're going to be left alone. That's why when this game started, I thought that I thought the yeah, whole one-eyed thing was like a curse or something that happened later on because, you know, they kind of look alike. Um, just, you know, one longer hair. Anyway, um, I saw Jen here. Oh, it's really cute. Don't ignore me. Whatever, shall we get going then? Yeah, does anyone object to walking? Uh, nope, it's not like a 20 minute walk from here or something kind of more short distance to be taking the train for. Alright, let's go. There's not enough room on the sidewalk for us to walk side by side, so Kimi and Tomo walk in front while Sachi and I fall behind them. Oh, well, I forgot my mouse senpai. Sachi looks up at me, yeah. Um, can we hold hands? Yeah, sure. I said it because both Tomo and Kimi are here, but I guess that was more out of habit than anything. It's too late to have my relationship with Sachi at this point. So like I can refuse her when she's staring at me with that beautiful shining eye anyway. Sachi happily wraps her arm around mine. I don't think I've seen her fawn over me this much before. But then again, she's been pretty open with her affection lately. By the way, the place we're going to is, oh, you guys look so cute. It keeps me looking back at us, seem almost upset as she says this. Sachi recalls from her. Outburst, suddenly embarrassed, and lowers her gaze, but she doesn't look with my arm. Kimi's actually making me uncomfortable as well, but I saw she's not letting go. I'm about not to force her. Tomo, I want to do that too. Hey, cut it out. It's hard to walk like this. 
He may spirit to this hallway, sees his tumultuous arm as he turns his head to glare at me. Don't look at me, I didn't do anything. Get off. Aren't double dates just fantastic? It's a single date plus two. <laughs> That's cold, Tomo. Fine, fine, just don't hang on me. Like I said, it's hard to walk like that. He, they look like they're having fun. Such ch Chan, the only one having fun is Akimi, but you could take her off my hands if you want. But I can't let go of her mom, so I'm probably. You say that, but I think Tomo's the only one who's actually trapped. Oh, shut up, you two aren't the only ones in pain here. In pain, you got the beautiful Kimi chair wrapped around your arm. You should be more than enthusiastic. Man, there's no point in our game with you. Despite his protest, I could tell he's not entirely against Akimi latching onto him like that. In fact, she seems to have him in the palm of her hand. Oh, man, this is the place, right? We're finally here. The large plaza is dotted with various dolls, and there are a few people here who are doing some kind of performance right now. There, there are more people here than I thought there would be, and I can hear instruments being played somewhere beyond the crowd. There must be a concert around here somewhere. Didn't realize how big an event this is going to be, Akimi. What's this all for? I hope she has more of a plan than just wandering around aimlessly. We need to use our time a bit more wisely than that. I only looked up where it was being held. I don't know any more than you do. Jeez, Akimi, you didn't find out. This is all here in the first place. We can't find out while we're here, can't we? It looks to me like it's almost big traditional style festival. It seems like it'll be a lot of fun. Kimi's already let go of Tomo's arm, but Sachi doesn't look like she wants to detach herself from mine. Oh, well, why don't we talk, walk around and see what's here? Yeah, don't yell so loud. You're no fun. After a while, Sachi stops at Kimi in her tracks. Look, there's saloon creeps. Or creep, wait, crap, your face? I don't know. Uh, I want one, Sachi, and you want one too. You like sweet things, right? I don't know, I want to say creeps if that's wrong, someone correct me. Sachi, on creeps. I never had one before, but I do like sweet things. Yeah, see, such a nice one, too. Akimi turns it towards Tom with the hungry smile. Get your own creeps. They're a pretty big line. They go stand in line. Stand in line for us. No. What? You didn't even think about it. I don't have to be the one to do it. I'm not the one who wants one. Don't worry. Here's some cash prices on how I like, okay? You can't force me to. You know what I like, all right? Somehow, yes, I do. Maybe I should buy you something you won't like. Oh, don't be that way. So tell me what you want. I'll pay for you. Uh, no, that's okay. I can pay for myself. It's fine, Sachi. It's fine. This is like your welcoming party after all, but, but go for it. Why not? Well, well, thank you for your generosity. So what do you want? Take a look at the menu here. Uh, um, just what was cheapest, please. It all looks good. The cheapest born. I told you I don't mind. Sachi and Tomokan. Get something nice for it, okay? Roger that, so we get the cheapest thing for Akimi and the rest. <laughs> Use the rest to get us the most extravagant thing I can afford for Sachi Chan. Hey, wait a minute, it's still my money. Oh, Merle, you want anything? Nah, I'm good, thanks. You guys go get drinks while I'm doing this. I'm going to be thirsty by the time I get all this, and I don't want to wait in line again. Fair enough, okay, I'll go buy something to drink and meet you back here. Go get me on some tea or something. Roger Dodger. We watched Tom as he gets in line for the creep stand before heading out for ourselves to find drinks. Oh, here's a vending machine over there. Yeah, but this sure is. Is that all right? Yep. We get our drinks and I find a bench in a view of the creep stand. Tom was still not here yet. Hey, Sachin. Yes. Are you having fun? Yes, a lot of fun. You are? Yeah, good. You seem like you mostly got uncomfortable with them. Yes, I have. At first, I wasn't sure what to do or how to act, but I've had a lot of fun just hanging out with you all. I mean, you don't have to be so polite around us. You gotta cut loose a little more. I'm trying to be more relaxed, but really, you should be more like me, bursting with energy. Uh, I'm not sure I could be like you, Akimi Senpai. Don't try to turn into her, you, her into you. Normal people don't burst. <laughs> hey, I got your creeps. Hey, before I know it, tell me stay in front of us with two creeps. Ah, uh, thanks. Here, I take a change too, and this one's for you, Sachi. I thought he was joking before, but he brought back with Sachi. You could easily feed two people. Then thank you very much. Don't mention it. Tomo hands such a hair creep, but once it reaches in her hand, all she does is stare at it and how she turns towards the Kimi Tomo sitting looking very serious. Tomo, you are surprised. Give me surprise. Thank you both so much for today. Today, let's not be so formal about it, silly. Yeah, I feel just as the Kimi's been going crazy and dragging us all over the place. This is not to be a one time thing, you know. You do you want to hang out again sometime? Hey, yes, thank you. By the way, you should probably eat your creep. Yeah, you know, your eye looks so good. The two start eating their creeps. 
Kimmy just does her face at the point once her cheeks are puffing out while such eats her tiny little nibbles. Those two could not be more different. Oh, is it good? Yes, delicious. Her smile is as sweet as the creep she's eating, and I'll be able to tell one to keep me for setting this all up. Hey, don't be so greedy. You're going to push all the feelings at the bottom. But don't talk with your mouth full of crap. It's see. Akimi's last bite seems to make the chocolate sauce start oozing out of the crust. I told you, Akimi. Uh, she gulps down another part of the creep, but only pushes more chocolate sauce on, onto her hand, <laughs> which of course begins to drip all over the place. At least she manages to avoid it getting on her clothes. Finally, she swallows. Aw, oh, man, anyone know where I can wash my hands? Someone come help me out. All right, all right, just keep those hands away from me. We'll be back soon, guys. Uh, okay, bye. Such a man watching once they go find somewhere to clean up. The chocolate situation is getting steadily worse. Those two sure are lively. Yeah, but can you supply this make life exciting, right? Yeah, things are rarely boring with her around. Tomoyori is a really nice person, even if he says mean things sometimes. That's just how he is. Akimi's really got a hold on him. They're a good match for each other. No kidding. They're great, though, aren't they? They are. You know, I haven't known them a lot that long, but I can tell you guys will become close friends in no time. Hey, I've been hearing some rumors about what Sotokawa's been doing to you. It doesn't sound good at all. You know, tell Mayumi san or any, anyone else because you didn't want to cause trouble for them, right? So she doesn't reply, but she's not denying it, so I'm pretty sure I hit the nail on the head. Like I said this morning, I think even Mayumi's son will listen to what you have to say. All of us around you, we're all your allies. So Sachi, if you think you need to, I'll, I'll, I just don't want to see you get hurt again. I never asked for help from anyone. I never fought back against Sotokawa. It's like you just said, I don't want to trouble anyone if I can avoid it. I see. But it's just, just that. I never stood up for myself because I didn't have the courage to do so. I didn't have the courage to do anything. If I was brave, I might be able to fight back against the Kawa son. I might be able to tell her off. Well, then push comes to shove. I'll be here for you. You can't be worried about causing other people trouble in times like this. Both for your sake and for the sake of those who care about you. You're stronger than you realize, Sachi. Maybe. Definitely. But it's a decision that you have to make. I don't understand then. Next time Sotokawa's son tries to do something, I'll tell her to stop. Good. And if things get bad, it's, us. it's okay to ask the people around you for help. Okay. But it doesn't sound like, it's, like her heart is in it. Sorry for bringing it up so sadly. It's probably not something we should be talking about right now. Today is supposedly be a day where we can have fun together and, and forget our troubles. Hey, if you don't eat your creep, you're going to end up like a Kimi. Alright. With that, she starts eating a creep in her hand once more. I hope I could help Sachi take her mind off Sotokawa. Looks good. Are you enjoying it? Yes, I don't really get to eat this sort of thing at all. It's probably the best thing I've ever tasted. I guess I should have asked Tomo to get me one, too. Oh, then you want a bite? Yeah, uh, but here. Sochi holds the creep up to my mouth. I'm all too conscious of the fact that Sochi's had her own mouth all over it. And she's trying to pay me back for when I shared her lunch that one time. Sochi stares at me expectantly, her hand I'm moving. Oh, well, okay. Take a bite of the creep before me. Is it good? Yeah, I have no idea what is in this thing, but it's incredibly sweet. So sweet, jeez, you two. Don't do things do so sweet like that while we're gone. Started all that jerk my head around to see where Kimi and Tomo have returned. They totally just saw that, didn't they? Suddenly my face feels like it's on fire, and I look over at Sachi to see that her cheeks have also gotten red, but she seems almost happy about it somehow. That's so cute, Tomo. I want us to do that too. We can't. We've already. De you've already. De <laughs> wait, wait, what? Oh, you already devoured your cupid, didn't you? Let's buy another then. I refuse. Suddenly a great movement comes out of nowhere and all four of us jump in surprise. What the heck was that? I looked toward the direction of the sound, but the crowd makes it impossible to locate its source. Went well, indeed. Maybe it was part of one of the performances we saw. Yeah, right. We saw a lot of people doing shows and stuff on our way in. Let's go over there and try to find them. Oh yeah, well then. Let's go, Sachi. Are you down with your creep? Yeah, just one more bite. It seems like the rest of the day is going to be a lot of fun. I'll try to make it as fun for Sachi as I can. I like it when she smiles so much. Oh, well, it's kind of early to be um, doing this, right? Um, okay. Ruby? Who's Ruby? I'm seriously in a bad mood. I want to hit something. I'm in class, but I'm so pissed I can't concentrate on what's being taught. 
last weekend they said there was some kind of event going on, so I went to town to check it out. What I saw there was really disgusted me. I saw another group of students from my school there. I'm not saying I hate them just because they're from my school, though. What it disgusted me is that they were some of my classmates. Okay, so it's probably that Sadakawa chick. It's probably her, like, this is like her first name or something. I don't know. Usui Sachi. And of course, I couldn't start standing there in that crowd of people, so I just beat the crap out of a trash can and went home. I hate those days. That girl with the only one eye. So she's fun to kick around, but I don't hate her because of how she looks or anything. I hate her because she's a spineless insect. And if I insult her, she never gets mad. Even if I grab her leg and chip her, and she never tries to fight back. She never complains. Hell, she never even glares at me as she's scurrying away. The way I see it, there's no reason for me to stop anytime soon. She'll never ask anyone for help. She'll never even have friends who can help her. I hate her because I love how she trembles when I hurt her. That's why she'll always be my punching bag. But lately, so there's been a game between me and my punching bag. There's been some second year guy who I think only transferred in a few months ago. He's been sticking his nose where it doesn't belong. I thought that weakling just asked for help from some other classmates she doesn't even know. But he's just helping her because it makes him feel good about himself. It lets him feel like he's better than someone. I don't care how much he needs to use her as a pathetic confidence booster. She didn't do anything to deserve that. The coward. She just got lucky. This weekend she was that sick and your guy and two others. And she looked so happy it made me sick. I've seen another two that she was with before. I especially remember that alchemy girl. And middle school she came to preach to me about how it's so mean or some crap with that stupid white knight attitude. As soon as I found out she was in the high school I was going to, I waited to see if she'd come at me again, but she never did. I thought she wants to do anything with me anymore after what I did to her, but now I feel like she's spit in my face. I ran out of patience. Finally, the bell rings and school is over. Akimi's going to try and be the first one out of the classroom again, but today I'm not going to let her get away. I reached the doorway before her and stopped her from leaving. Hey. I- yes? Come here, I want to talk to you. I grab her arm before she could say anything and drag her out of the classroom. Uh, that hurts. I would normally start using my arms, my punching back right then and there, but this time I need to find someone we won't be disturbed. School's over and only the students on the stairway are those who go into their collectivities. I drag her up to the door that leads to the roof and pin her there. Uh, stop it, I'm please. Did that little bitch just try to talk back to me? What the hell did you just say to me? I said, I'm just stop. And he says, she wanted to show me, leaks out of her, and she shuts her mouth. Her white night friends have been trying to get her to stand up to me. I don't like that, and I let her know by jumping my fist into her stomach several times. Nick, this time all she does is take it, so much for standing up to me. See, she'll never change. I shove her, and she trembles backwards. As she comes tumbling down again, something falls out of her pocket and hits the ground with a clatter that echoes in the stairway. This looks like it's her cell phone. She's got a new strap on it that I've never seen before. I pick it up in my left hand, and she move it in sm- before she can move it and smash it against the ground. No, she stares at her phone like a retard. Her, her eye is suddenly on me and is full of rage. I never seen such a piercing angry glare. It stops me before I can throw her phone. Her freakish eyeballs are only making it worse, and that seems to be reaming with courage. I've never seen her before. Leave me alone already. She spins back on her feet, and I can tell she's not going to back down this time. And me back at my phone. She's yelling now. I'm so surprised to hear her voice at me that I stand there stupidly for several seconds. And the phone in my hand starts to ring. He's calling me. Give it to me. Like I'm just going to let her have it. Give it back now. She says she doesn't wait for me moving, marching to me. He tries to snatch the phone out of my hand. No, you don't. I shake her hand and aim at her face. And she tries to block it. I never seen her fight back or try to protect herself like this before. She's still fighting her though, so she, even with this newfound energy, she can't stop me from driving my fist into her face. But even though my blow connects, she stands her ground, barely laying out a sound and getting her balance right away. Before I could pull my hand back, she grabs onto my wrist, give it back, and I guess she was just my phone in my left hand. Now that she's holding it to my right, I can't easily hit her. I push her into my shoulder with the arm, she slides on to kick her left leg out from under her. She's already leaning forward and reaching for her phone, so this easily throws her off balance. Eek. Reflexively, I push her on her again and throw her into the floor behind me. I turn around to follow the throw up with another punch, or I try to. Oh shit, we're on the stairway, there's no floor behind me. I had to send her flying with more force than I meant to use. Everything seems to slow down as she flies down the stairs toward the landing far below her. Wait, so she's not here yet? I thought you went to find her. I ran to the shoe rack at the exit of the school building to find Tomo and to keep me waiting there. See, like always, I went straight to the first year classroom to meet Sachi. I couldn't find any trace of her, though, thinking I might have missed her headed here. 
Maybe just didn't notice her in the crowd. No way, she would have said to me. We would never message going home together. I don't think she went home early either. Hmm, I don't know, a sec. He went to the passing soon and asked her something. Someone she knows? Oh yeah, but you've seen that girl before, haven't you? Kim was asking her about such a chant. Now that he mentions it, I think I do. I sometimes see her when I go to meet such at her classroom. Actually, she's in the same class. Isn't she? Man, Kimi really does have a big network of friends. Whatever the student's telling her, Kimi still looks very worried and she runs back to us. Mad Khan. She said that the class taught Chan left the class and went to read Chan. But Sadakawa, where did they go? That much I don't know. I've got to find her. Hey, my mom, geez, well, I guess it'd be more deficient if we split up. And I'll probably go into that before. So, Kimi, you check the first floor. Also, turn on outside the building. Gotcha. I told him I was like, I not actually tried to take Sachi anymore. At least Sachi's not telling me if she has. I've got a bad feeling about this. Climb the stairs as quickly as I can. What am I doing? I should try calling her before I start searching blindly. Take up my phone while I'm running up the stairs and call Sachi. Of course, until she picks up, I can't even do anything but search blindly. Past the second floor, those are the classrooms, and if Sadako is going to take Sachi somewhere, it's not going to be anywhere near us. If you took Sachi outside of school, she'd have to go past Tom and Akimi since they're waiting by the school shoe rack. Their first floor has so much traffic to go through, so she couldn't go there either. Again, all that, it's very possible that she took Sachi up to the third floor. Finally, we're at the top of the stairs on the third floor, but no, what? There haven't been any clues to my point where they've gone so far. Such as answered her phone, but it must still be ringing. I rest the third floor landing, trying to figure out what's next. I hear a ringtone coming from nearby. It's got to be Sachi's. It must be close. It's coming from somewhere above me. I immediately think of the stairway leading up to the roof where Sachi and I had lunch together not so long ago. Give it back. I hear a voice cry from the same direction. It's definitely Sachi. I sprint up the stairway. And when I turn to the midway landing between the two floors, I see Sachi fly down the stairs in front of me. Behind her, I saw the cover, arm outstretched. Watch out. I jump up the stairs, my body operating on instinct at this point. Eek, I'm with Sachi. And when I go blank, his body dives forward, just barely managing to get my arms between Sachi and the floor. The force of her fall brings us both down. It's not one might be considered a graceful catch, but at least I stopped her from hitting her head. So are you okay? I get hold of myself and manage to stand up before helping Sachi to her feet. Says the body came for me. Yeah, are you hurt? I hit my knee, but I think I'm fine otherwise. I guess I couldn't completely protect her. She came and says as she let go of me and tries to stamp on her own. As I look over her and check her for injuries, the first thing I notice is a bruise on her face. She didn't have it when we met for lunch today. Doesn't look too bad, though, so we can deal with that later. Okay, well, right now I think we need to get to school, nurse. Say, are you okay? And don't worry about me. I can completely support her when I caught her. And her weight brought my arms to bang against the floor. That hurt like hell. But I can't show any weakness right now. I'm not screaming in pain at least, so there's probably no permanent damage anyway. Hey, Sadakawa. I think my pain and down and turn her face like always still sitting at the top of the stairs. If I hadn't been here, such would probably been seriously injured or worse. Like I care, it was an accident anyway. But she looks away from me as she says it. When Sachi was falling, it did look like Sadakawa tried to reach out for her, so she probably wasn't lying about that. But that doesn't make her any less responsible, and I'm sure she's also responsible for that new mark on Sachi's face. Stop boring Sachi. Yeah, why well, should I listen to you? Because you almost got her killed just now. What do you think will happen to you if I tell a teacher or your parents what you did? Yeah, if you don't leave me alone, I'll make sure everyone knows what you're doing. Sachi doesn't retreat behind me. She just stands her ground, looking Sadako in the eye. Are you threatening me? You got some nerve. Sadako walks on several steps, advancing towards Sachi immediately. I just want you to stop doing this. Sachi doesn't back away as Sadako approaches. I can't stop. I can't stand weaklings like you, and I refuse to let someone as pathetic as you do as you please. Then I'll tell. I won't let you snitch on me. If you do, then you'll be trouble. What are you saying? I'm going to disappear. Huh? I'll say I want to leave the school. It's not like I have any friends here, and I can't mess with you anymore, so there's no point in me being here. I'll turn to a different school. My parents don't give a shit anyway. You don't have to go that far. Shut up. I can't even stand to be around you anymore, and I can't let you snitch on me, so I'm leaving. Got it? So the cover presses Sachi's phone in her hand before heading down the stairs. We watch her go down, go, and keep, keep staring at the stairwell. Even after she's gone, both of us completely dumbfounded by what just happened. After a while, Tom wanted to keep me up here on the stairs in the place of Sotokawa. I'm all I'm all such a chin. Are you guys alright? We just passed. Reach out on the stairs. Was she here? Oops, wrong button. Yeah, she was. I don't really know what just happened, to be honest, but she, used to, she stopped blowing Sachi. Just as she hated her and was going to change schools. Wait, you Chan said that? Yeah, I don't know if she's serious or not. There's no way that's going to happen. Why not? The instant said said she was going to change to go to Mila's. Well, Akimi, it was a similar reason too, I think. What the hell? I'm going to talk to her. 
Key Munch is down the stairs and we can hear her stomping down the hallway even as she sits out of sight. Hey, Key Munch, she's that girl. Tomo follows her down the stairs. Will Key Munch be okay? That was what I'm worried about. Well, whatever, so like I always said. She's going to transfer to another school, but I wonder if it really is easy, you know? At least I could do more than just cry now. Now you said up to her, I was amazed. Honestly, you're completely different from when we first met. It's all to you, thanks to you, Senpai. You're going to be me too much credit. In the end, you're the one who stood up to her, not me. Even though, even so, thanks for everything you've done, for helping me change, for finding me. Hey, you know this is where we first met, isn't it? We haven't come back here in a long time, have we? Yeah, lately we've been having lunch on the second and fourth at Kimi and Tomo. Really, I am grateful to you, Senpai. She has changed. She hasn't been stuttering nearly as much as when we first met, and she smiles a lot more as well. And when we talk, she looks right at me and says, well, anywhere else. But that eye of hers never changed. It stayed bright and shining this whole time, and I can't get it out of my mind. When we stand there in silence for a while, I gaze into her eye, and she gazes into mine. Hey, yes? You know, even if she doesn't leave the school, I don't think she'll be hurting you anymore. I think you're right. I'm not the weakling she thought I was anymore, and when you push come and shove, you were really there for me, Senpai. You saved me. I guess that means your wounds are finally going to heal. Yeah, I guess so. Do you want to touch them while I still have them? I mean, uh, sure. Okay, so she closes her eyes and presses her body into mine just like last time. Maybe it's a selfish of me. I've been waiting for this. I wish my hand on her shoulder just like last time. But this time, I don't put my hand on the scar of her brow. Instead, while her eyes still closed, while she's so vulnerable, I put my free hand under her chin, lift her head up before I put my lips onto hers. I let her lips touch for only a moment, just enough for Sachi to feel it. She rears back a little, blinking at me in astonishment. That was unfair, you know. Yeah, I know, sorry. But do it again. Do it right this time. And how are you? And I think her eyes caught me in this spell, and I couldn't refuse her even if I wanted to. I take her by the shoulder again, and we slowly come together. Her eyes open this time. Just as I feel myself being drawn into her eye, I draw her body close to me. Well, I think this is the first time we saw anything close to what we might look like. But, I don't know, that was something like her right there, so I mean, I don't know what we would really look like. Um, I guess that was it. Um, after episode. Um, okay, anyways, guys, well, I'm not doing the after episode. I ain't gonna worry about them. I just wanted to do the main story. Thanks for watching, guys.